time for a quick skinning video. Had uh, left out a couple of things there on uh, one of my previous videos. Um, tried to make another one, and all it ended up being was a blooper reel video. I uh, ended up, I managed to take and get the, the bottom of the coyote snapped off. So a blooper reel, a couple four letter words, and that was the end of that. And uh, so yeah, I got a couple of uh, coyotes here. I'm gonna take and uh, I'm gonna skin them. Um, I'll I'll use my uh, I'll use my latch setup that I have here. Um, I've got two anchors on the bottom, and uh, yeah, basically all I have here is I've got a uh, sheet metal vice grip, adjustable sheet metal vice grip, welded up chain. And then a carabiner latch into the bottom. Adjustable chain for different sized animals. And uh, yeah, that's it. So I'll take and we'll, uh, we'll skin one uh, by hand here. Both of these are, both of these are kind of the same. And uh, these two Coyotes, they've been hanging out here for a while. I was not able to do anything with them before I left. They were they were frozen a hundred miles an hour, and uh, so basically, I had to go trapping in the mountains for the weekend. So these two dogs, they had to wait. So, I don't know what kind of shape they're in, but nonetheless, I'm getting to it now. And, uh, we'll take and get this one hung up. So, keep a little paper handy. Sometimes they like it when you wipe their bum a little bit. Not bad. And this is where I got my gear. So yeah, we'll see if we can kind of display what I'm doing here. Uh, for the most part, it's uh, nothing that you may not already have seen, but I'm going to take and skin two side by side, and one is going to take and I'm going to take and just pull them by hand, and then yeah, you're susceptible to uh, however good or bad pulling a coyote is, but... <clears throat> Because I do like to take and use my winch. I don't take and skin coyotes any other way. But uh, that is unless I don't have my winch handy. So basically any any skinning that I do at the cabin, I just took and skinned the big gray wolf that I caught. Chased him <clears throat> into the snare in the dark when I went up. And... Uh, so he was real easy skinning. He was a big wolf, but he skinned good. Had to pull him. And, uh, but uh, skinning coyotes at home here, there's just nothing like it. If you want to skin them in numbers, get yourself a winch. Boy, she's, uh, she's a pretty easy deal. Well, pretty helpful. It's not easy. The easy part comes in repetition doing lots the only way to take and get good at doing coyotes is to do lots and 
So considering the time <clears throat> that I took and spent my machine just so happened to blow up on the weekend, a fairly sad kind of situation for me. It really, really was. Didn't particularly enjoy that, but uh, be that as it may, that's just how it goes sometimes. So I had some friends had to come out, bail me out, which ended up working out just fine, but uh, the time now is 11.30 at night, or maybe a little bit later. I uh, know I had to had to get these two guys skinned. For those of you that have done kites and numbers, you know uh, the reality of uh, wearing a kite carcass across the top of your head. I mean, it just does happen. Until you have your system kind of figured out where you know what you need for for hanging them up and so on I've uh, <laughs> I've had some fairly undignified kite flops come landing and flying across the top of me bit there.
that. Is the finished product of scanning a kite. Now I'll take this next one. Use the winch on them. Works pretty good skinning them like this. I just find that for me, once you get a little older, it's kind of easier to take and use the winch to pull. Let that hide cool off there a little bit. Last year, I had a different setup going on there, and uh, I forget even exactly what the combination was of the uh, compilation of errors that I had going on. But uh, there was more than once I took a kite and ripped it off the ceiling, and I was wearing it, and it's uh, really in those moments. When I look back at it, it would have made an epic blooper reel. It really should have been footage caught on tape. And to tell you the truth, I've never ever searched it. I'm sure there's probably guys that have posted stuff like that. Um, this guy here, again, it's kind of a big, long, lanky. Irish setter looker. Look at that. Wow, that's an orange tinge to him. Huh. What does this guy look like here? That's a big tall male again. You know what I should do? I should taxidermy skin this guy. Why don't I just quickly do that? Let's take and redo that. And we'll just take a few more minutes on the feet and a few more minutes on the head. And we'll skin him. But I kind of get, I'm getting more and more requests to take in. People are curious about taxidermy full mounts and rugs and whatnot. So, and this one looks like he's in good shape. So, so we will oblige him and keep him together. Critters are always fun when you get to putting your knife on them and you realize that they're going to take and skin easy. And they don't always. Boy, I don't know what it is, but some some old warriors they take and they they really, really. It's when they don't have fat. I find they don't have hardly any fat, and uh, and then that membrane along their back 
and whatnot. It's literally just fused onto their uh, onto their back, and uh, it's just hell trying to skin them or flush them. Skinning them isn't necessarily a deal breaker, but flushing them. Yeah, we'll see. Somebody might be interested in this thing. It's kind of a pretty one, and the thing is, they don't. Uh, I was watching one guy, and he was saying that the reason that they don't bring many is because there's bring much money. It's because they, there's not enough of them. So if they're gonna take and make trim, what you end up with is uh, you end up with a situation where the fur grader kind of doesn't have a, a pile of fur there that uh, yeah, we can kind of see what's going on here where uh, he doesn't have the uh, doesn't have a pile of graded fur of that ilk and so you basically end up with a fur that just does not have value. I'll oh, leave it at that. We'll get the rest of him in a minute. But yeah, I can see this particular coyote. It's really... Really nice and orange. I'll try to stay right on the line there and make it a little easier for the for the taxidermist. I think when they can stitch right where the colors meet, it's actually a kind of a line that takes and hides the stitches simply because there is already a transition there in that fur. just yet. Skinning out pretty good. And I want to keep that back leg intact to hang him. So we'll see if we can't find a saw here. Kids do like using dad's tools. So that's how that goes. And I might be walking right around it and I just can't see it. So we don't need to wait. I'm trying to find a, a saw. And we've got an electric one that can do the trick. Okay, got those back legs done. Get this baby hung back up. Yeah, like I said, I had uh, had some inquiries on these things in the past, and 
you know, I only catch a few of these every year, so I'm going to oblige those curiosities, especially when I catch them in January. Like, the fur quality is so good that uh, it'd be a shame to look back at an opportunity and say, uh, you know, why didn't I skin that one for taxidermy? Look at that red. And look at that. It's so deep and thick. And even down the side, he's really nice. He's not soft, soft. Tail is full. That's going to give an awesome mount right there. That is going to give an awesome coyote mount. And he's long. He's tall. It'll be an XXL. Should be a big boy. Here we go. Okay, let's finish him off. Let's get this baby pulled. Well, it's no longer a five minute coyote, is it? We'll just make sure that we take it. Leave the anus, leave the vent with them. And. Sometimes that inside just takes a, just a tiny bit. Try to not uh, get into any sort of bad habits uh, and say things like, well, the taxidermist will fix that. I just, not that interested in that. Um, can happen though. I mean, if that's how it goes, then that's how it goes, but. We'll try to take our time here. Just take a little bit less, a little bit more time. And uh, just kind of make sure that you kind of operate in a manner conducive to, if this was your critter that you want to, uh, have in your showroom you don't want to take it get them all stitched up we'll give that tail a little head start and then at that point 
I love my little tool. Love my little tools. Come to Papa. I get them up high, just on the outside of the tail, where they almost basically meet, and I squeeze them up as far into the back as I can, and then just make sure that I have good grip, nothing crazy, because I'm not going to over pull it. Um, if I uh, if you over tap them and over pull them, they snap, run it. They can just latch these carabiners down on the bottom. They're tight. Then I grab these legs on the front just to take a helper. Pulling tight there. Just gotta get those sides done there. Sometimes I've noticed that those front legs right by the heels, they want to, uh, for whatever reason, they want to kind of pull, the hair wants to kind of pull through a little bit, and you got to be careful that they don't want to rip apart, especially on a taxidermy animal. Just give them a little bit of extra time. No need to take it. Hurry and get them butchered. So now I'll take them down. Pull these babies off. Them again, I guess. Oh, come on, buddy. Quite want to go. Well, we'll be patient. We'll help them. Toughened up right on the snare catch. You can make sure we leave all that cartilage on there.
a little bit of jelly head there, so we'll just try to prevent some of the flooding. Try to get those lips skinned properly. Working not bad. Just kind of jellied a bit though. There we go. Kind of happy I did that. Caught that in time. Got all the lips there. Newspaper down here isn't too bad. I put all this down there to kind of catch it. And in this particular case, I've got a little jelly head going on. Soak some of that up a little bit. But that's it. There we go. So yeah, those are my tools. Um, two things that I would never do without again is uh, my little uh, bad welding job beam right there skin and beam and these clamps when you take and you do a whole bunch in a day it makes all the difference in the world and I've seen I've seen different ones that guys use uh, where they build them just a little bit different and, uh, but kind of all the same as far as that goes but yeah that uh, that there is a real awesome awesome trick this one here I've seen guys that use a much tighter chain and then an actual round loop on the end don't know where they got them I bought this stuff at the hardware store worked good even my crazy weld there I mean how bad is that <laughs> I love it oh there you go well nobody's ever gonna take it and steal it looks like garbage got some more uh, coyote trapping going on Picked up my Martin Bach, my Martin Traps. Yeah, Martin Trapping was kind of bad this year, but 
It didn't drop as hard as I have some years uh, for various reasons. So I'm not necessarily that disappointed. Let them, let them live. Let them, let them repopulate good. Uh, let them get their numbers to where they're supposed to be. And, uh, and I'm fine with that. And uh, yeah, getting, uh, getting set up for some more trapline tour adventures and so on and so forth. So, solo trapper, keep on rolling.